Hello and welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills. I'm your host, Tia Young. Today we are going to talk about veterans benefits, part two of our series, and to help us discuss this complicated and sometimes very confusing world of veterans benefits, our special guest currently holds two positions within the Veterans of Foreign Wars, sometimes called F BFW, BFW. He was recently elected as Vice Commander District 1 Service Officer, and he continues to serve as Service Officer at BFW Post 9619. Our Man of Valor enlisted in the United States Marine Corps in 1975 and proudly served until he was medically discharged in 1991 as Gunnery Sergeant. During his time as a Marine, while serving at Marine Barracks located at 8th and I Streets in the District of Columbia, he was on the silent drill team, color guard, and then went on to serve as presidential guard at Camp David. He also stood post on the West Wing at the White House, for which he was awarded the prestigious Presidential Service Badge. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once again Commander Todd Trainum to our skill set. Welcome again. Thank you. Thank you for having now, me back again. Listen, we didn't get to, uh, uh, for, for series one, we didn't get to <laughs> even half of our questions. Yes. So we're going to get right into it. Okay. Um, can you go over the benefits that you talked about for the children whose parents? Um, oh, yeah. Uh, we are very proud of our National Home for Children. And like I said, it's in Ohio. Um, Get with me later on for criteria as far as getting mm -hmm. into it and everything else. Mm -hmm. But we there, we really stress the values of education, good work habits, and sound moral character for children. These are kids who may have lost a parent or whose parent can't do for them like they want to do for them. And we step in and we help them with that. And we help bring those kids like a big brother, big sister uh, thing. But we give them an environment that gives them the confidence to go on in life, knowing they, they're dealing with the mm -hmm. hardship but uh, to see that there's hardships out there in this world and to move on. Right, up and up the, the scholarship bottom. amounts go up to Yes, the uh, scholarship amounts go up to $25,000. Uh, we have uh, the Voice of Democracy, we're very proud of that. Um, it's, it's a great program, and it's for those children that know, they feel inside, they know that they're gonna go on, go on about their business and they're gonna do something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it helps children. Well, I want to, uh, next question is something that has been uh, very disturbing to me, and then we definitely want to get back into the claims process okay. because I know we didn't examine mm -hmm. everything there. Yes. I'm going back now to um, the uh, late 60s, early 70s. Yes. I had a couple of friends who had husbands mm -hmm. that had gone to the Vietnam uh, War. When they got back, they were totally different. I know. One, one, one friend of mine, if she needed to wake her husband up, mm -hmm. she had to go in another room yes. and call him because yes. if she touched him to shake him to wake up, you know, he, he, he might, yes. he, he woke up fighting. Yes, post-traumatic um, stress disorder. Is that what that's called? And then uh, another, another friend, uh, her husband would be at the window mm -hmm. and he would have a glass in his mm -hmm. hand and he would be looking out of the window crying and crushing that glass yes. in his hand. Yes. And both of those marriages end up in divorce because the, the, the ladies, they were just frightened. They didn't, they didn't know what to expect. And at that time, there wasn't a lot being done. There wasn't. There wasn't. Have, Give them a pill, let them sit things, in the corner. Tell things, me things, things have, have changed, changed drastically for the better. I will give VA credit on that. They have recognized that we're sending these children, these kids, out to war, and they're coming back with these conditions. Earlier in the 60s, 70s, even the 80s, they weren't recognizing post-traumatic stress. They were like, oh, you know, he'll get over it, or this, that, and the other. But now we have these children, we're sending them over there, two and three tours over there. They are seeing death and destruction every day. And some of them have never and, even shot a gun they've never before. never shot a gun before. Now they're shooting children yes. and, you know. So now they're coming back and their minds are blown. Now, what stresses you, Tia? And what stresses me are two different things, maybe two different things, okay? Mm -hmm. We might see the same thing and look at it differently. Uh, the VA medical system has realized that's why it's called post-traumatic stress disorder. I myself suffer from it. It didn't hit me, and I, I've been out for 20 years. It didn't hit me until about three years ago, going wow. to Arlington Cemetery, visiting a friend's grave. 
I, from that time on, my whole attitude and demeanor changed, and I was like, this is not me. I was told, this is not you. I went to the VA and said, hey, I need some help. I'm not acting myself. You know, so versus giving somebody drugs and sitting them in the corner, they have programs where they have uh, bring you in with other veterans who are, who are going through it. You sit around uh, with uh, psychiatrists. They work on things. They teach you what the triggers are that may set you off. Okay, I have no. I have veterans who come. I have wives of veterans. Bring him in here. And say something's wrong with him. I, I woke up with him choking me in bed. Oh this, no! And this and this happens. He has to sleep on the couch now. You know, they don't realize what's going on. Did your lovely wife Vanessa realize, or did you just yourself, on the inside, know that something was wrong? Yeah. Or I did she? She, she didn't pick it up. Uh, when she saw the difference in me, yes. it was like you have to go get this taken care of. Okay. Okay. Um, there are different things that trigger different people at different times, okay? And it doesn't matter to, as to whether or not that person was in combat, whether or not they saw combat. You have people who have never been over in that war front who sat in Germany, sat in uh, Dover Air Force Base and everything else, and they see the bodies coming back in body bags. That's a traumatic experience to sit up and you're processing dead fellow servicemen nonstop. You know, that takes a toll on the mind, okay? So different things trigger people differently. And the VA medical system has realized that, yes, this is called post-traumatic post stress, stress disorder. And what okay? are they doing about and it? And they're doing, they are treating it well, I think. Uh, aside from medication, which some people do need, mm -hmm. I was taking sleeping pills to help me sleep because I wasn't sleeping more than three or four hours. I wake up with chills or sweats or whatever. And this is uh, 17, 18 years later. Yes, 17, 18 so years later. So it could later. come at it any come time. At any time. It could come at any and they time. teach you what the triggers are, how to avoid them, uh, how to see yourself going into that rut or getting yourself worked up that way. Uh, there are different programs. There are different outreach centers that they send people to. Uh, you have different. You have uh, separate private. Uh, conversations with psychiatrists one-on-one. -on -one. You also have group sessions, and there's therapy. They do everything from acupuncture to uh, uh, water, water uh, therapy, therapy yeah. to uh, yoga. Oh, I've done it all. Okay. I've done everything. Right. Uh, you know, and uh, these things do work, and the VA has recognized there's other methods of treating, and they, are, nice. they are open to all methods. Okay, that's very good to mm -hmm. know. Now, let's get back on to our paperwork with the ah. claims because I, I think that viewers really need to know that's yes. where a, a, the big gap yes. is and with back to what their I said. Benefits. Go to a veteran service organization. Have them start your paperwork. Let them represent you. But the simple fact is they can go through, they can break through that rhetoric of the paperwork. And what happens is once you start a VA claim, you'll receive a letter within a month, month and a half from the VA saying, we've received your claim, we're working on it, we need such and such and such and such for you. That's when you call back to your service office and say, hey, they asked for this. The service office is going to say, I already got this paperwork from you. This is the paperwork I gave you earlier. I'm getting your package together. Boom, I'm waiting on their, your records to come in from the VA. And then they write your program, they write your, your claim up, mm -hmm. and then they send it into the VA. Now we're waiting on the VA. That's why I said it takes anywhere from three months to a year and a half sometimes for some claims. Wow. Now, I also want to state this. Some people, when they get out, they've had an examination. The VA is giving them 10%, 0%, or anything else like this. Speaking of 0%, all you veterans who have a claim or, or have been given 0% from the VA, you can go in and request for an increase on that 0%. Whoa. Which is money. Yeah. Just because it says zero, it doesn't mean they're not giving you anything. It means they have recognized that there's a disability that happened to you while you're in the military. <laughs> That's the biggest thing with claims. People come into us and they want to claim uh, allergies now. If you, anything is in, if it's not in your medical record book when you were in, that's the VA's way of saying, oh, we don't recognize that. And that's what it says. It's not recognized in your, in your medical record books. Mm -hmm. And they deny it. Now, that's why you go to a veteran service organization, because there are some things that are triggered from other ailments right. that are considered a secondary condition. Mm -hmm. That's up to us to and their service office to find that to out. To find that okay? out. Okay, so now that your paperwork is in, we're waiting on the VA to send it around. They send it about three different places, and then you'll then receive a letter from the VA. We're sending you to a CMP, okay. uh, a CMP appointment. CMP is compensation and uh, compensation and pension appointment. Right. That's the money appointment that you want. Okay. That's the appointment you want. That's when you go see a doctor. Either either they send it out to a private doctor or they bring you mm -hmm. to the VA hospital. That's when you go see that doctor and they check on the uh, 
the rotation of your knee and mm -hmm. how far you can raise your hip and everything else, and they determine what percentage what they're going to give you. Okay, so it sounds like uh, people need to get in contact with you. Yes, need to get in yes, any veteran service organization, so any out. service That's officer. That's right. Yes. Now, we uh, have, uh, we're winding down on mm -hmm. time. I do have a okay. couple more questions okay. I want to get. Uh, as you know, we've got a big presidential election coming up. Yes. If you had Hillary Rodden Clinton sitting here and Donald Trump, those uh, mm -hmm. uh, appear to be the ones that, and I guess I better add uh, Mr. Uh, Sanders as well, because okay. it's not over yet. What would you say to them that veterans need? I would say cut through the rhetoric and the talk and do something for veterans. We've had four, I've seen four presidents in office now, and they always say, oh, we want to take care of our veterans, we want to take care of our veterans. We had a couple of Bushes in office who set up and said that, but they turn around and cut back on benefits for families mm -hmm. and everything else. They, try to take away commissaries and everything else. These are things that are needed by these veterans and these families, okay? Okay, okay? Not only is that person in the military, their family is in the military, okay? Right. I would tell Ms. Clinton and tell Mr. Trump, uh, enough talk. And Mr. Sanders. And Mr. Sanders, <laughs> enough talk. Put the money where your mouth is, because they always say, oh, so much money is set aside for, for veterans. I don't see it out here on the streets. Okay. I don't see it at all. I see money being taken away. I see we have shelters for veterans out there that the funding has been cut. Okay, right. but I got a president that says he wants to put every veteran in a home. Okay. I haven't seen a home pop up in the D.C. VA um, area yet for a veteran. Right. We're going to take a short station break. We'll be right back after these special announcements, so don't touch that dial. Noises like that used to make me hit the deck. But now, I can keep going. Don't get me wrong, I still don't love crowded places, but it's good to get out again. Transitioning from the military can be tough, but many veterans are facing similar challenges. Visit maketheconnection.net to watch our stories and learn ways to create the story you want to live. Make the Connection. Thank you for watching Skills to Pay the Bills and learning more about how to access veterans benefits from Commander Todd Trainum from VFW Post 9619. Now, um, the next question that I want to, um, to ask you is I know that you know so many people. I mean, the way yes. your outreach into the community yes. is just uh, phenomenal. Can you tell us about some of the partners that you're working with to help you get your job done? Well, along with you, we work with churches in the community. Mm -hmm. We work with uh, community, uh, I would say, uh, mayors, counseling, and everybody else. Whenever they have functions, we go out. We also work alongside with American Legion. We are not in competition with them. Okay. We are all VSOs. We have the American that's, Legion. That's a good point there yes. because a lot of people think that American Legion mm -hmm. and VFW, like they're... No. Not on, so can you no. explain, can you tell us why we need we are to not both think the same. that way? We are both the same. Yeah, like I said earlier, you have to have a certain criteria to join the VFW. If, you, if not, go join the American Legion. You can still come to our VFWs. We're not closing our doors. We have an intermingling family where we all go from each other's posts and visit. Okay. okay, you have American Legion, VFW, you have Disabled Veterans of America. You have uh, AMVETS. Yeah. You know, you have uh, Purple Heart Association. You have all kinds of organizations that are there for veterans, and we all intermingle. We all mix together at each other's posts. So it's not like there's a competition amongst them. Okay. And I don't ever tell anybody, oh, don't deal with this, that, or the other. And they don't say the same thing about us. How do you work with churches? In what ways? What kind of events? Uh, and whenever, well, sometimes they want to come in, they want to use our halls. We have, uh, oh. we have decent prices on hall rentals. Uh, as far as community service for some churches, we might let them use our hall for free, you know, if they're having a meeting or something like that. Uh, we work with them. Sometimes they'll sit up and say, hey, we're having a seminar and this, that, or the other. Can you represent? We set a table up and represent the VFW. Do they have to be a 501c3 in order to do that? No. Okay, so no. that means that if I had an event that I was doing something for veterans, give, just giving away things, could you we come, use you, your, I you didn't know use that. Our, yes, That's you can. You can come know. in and ask us, hey, what days are available for me to come in and do this? And that goes down for us as community service. Mm -hmm. And we gladly sit up and say, yeah, anything to help veterans, we are there. What about corporate uh, organizations? Corporate uh, organizations, we have to do the same thing you do. We have to yeah. go in. Rattle, rattle the, the coffers mm -hmm. and ask them, hey, can you give us this, that, or the other? But usually uh, our providers of our, either our food or our liquor in our, in our 
establishments, they are they gladly donate. They will donate. Yes, they That's will good. donate. That yes. is good. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Now, um, the other question that I had, um, you had started giving some testimonies, and I think we probably have a little time for you to give testimonies of people that have come to you um, almost hopeless. Yes. You know, with just not knowing what they you were going to do. And I you can't can mention any names, but I have, no, I have people right. that have, have come in, especially Vietnam veterans. Um, these Vietnam veterans, when they got back from Nam, they were disenfranchised, they were spit on, they were hated. Spit on? Yes, they were hated. I have a brother-in-law who was a POW for six years and got back here and people calling them baby killers and everything else. You have these veterans who came back from Nam and they really did not like the way they were treated and they just fell out of the system. Well, now they've gotten older. Their bodies are actually falling apart on them now. Mm -hmm. They're getting to that point and they're coming and saying, look, man, I was in Nam, what can I do? Most of my people that I put claims in for are Vietnam veterans. And I sit up and say, well, look, sit on down. Let's see where we can go from here. Let's get your record book and boom, boom. And most of the time, I get their money. If they're getting 10%, I get a boost up to 30. And I say, come back and see me in three months and let's ask for more. If they're at 50%, I get it up to 60 and I get them some more benefits. Mm -hmm. There are education benefits that come along as, as your percentages go up. Okay, I want veterans to know I get you to 100% in the state of Maryland. You don't have to pay any taxes on your home. You don't wow. have to pay any taxes on your home. You don't have to pay any registration fees for your cars. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Along with getting 100%, your spouse also gets falls under Champia. They no longer have to pay doctor bills. You only have to pay co-payments. Mm -hmm. Okay? You get into the system and they get their medication free. So they got pretty good health yes, care. Yes, it's pretty good. I get. I try my heart to get everybody to 100%. Mm -hmm. It takes time. So when I start, like you said, somebody walk in with nothing, Let's go for 10 percent first right. and then let's work our right. way up. Right. OK, I want to get you into the VA medical system where you're not coming out of your pocket for your medication. Let's get that associated with something that happened to you while you was in the military and let them pay you for it. Now, you know, I have seen uh, and this is I can't speak to uh, D.C. and Maryland because mm -hmm. I live in Virginia. Yeah. But I have been driving and I have seen uh, women and men veterans on the curb mm -hmm. begging for money. Yes. And that hurts my heart because I don't understand. And they are I veterans. don't understand how that could happen. Have you been able to help some of those people? Yes, we do. Can yes, you give we do. a testimony yes, on that? Yes, we do. Just recently, I had a homeless veteran come in, and he was like, "Man, I'm down out. I let him set up in the place, warm up, got him something to eat, gave him twenty dollars out of my pocket." We do have slush funds, and most of your posts and everything, mm -hmm. and can sit up and say, "I can give you some immediate assistance, this and the other." You know, you have veterans who. Their spouse is overseas. Their electric bill is due, or this, that, and the other. Give us a call. I'll give you. I'll put you in touch with somebody who can help you. Wow, we do that's that. great. That is great because mm -hmm. every time I, I could be starting out with a good day, yeah. and I see that, and I'm just like, how can that be? Yeah, you know, how it can happens we... in this great country of ours. That happens, right. and that's what I work hard to put it into. So that's that's one of the things you would tell yes. <laughs> the future presidents. <laughs> yes, I would. Let's, let's get these homeless veterans out, 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 out of the streets. Out. Right. Uh, this is what the country owes them. Right. That is right. Do you have any um, other words that you want to say about the claims process? Oh, I can say so I much. I mean, I know. You, you know, know, there there are so many things. Let's let's go into claims processes. Um, veterans don't know. Every time you have a VA appointment, if you have a scheduled appointment, you get paid travel time, you get paid gas money to and from. The good thing about it is the VA now has kiosks set up outside every uh, clinic, outside the travel office and everything else. If you have a scheduled appointment, you get paid gas money to and from. I live in Bowie. Does that, does that include Metro? Because maybe some yeah, of Yeah, includes Metro. Have... You okay. have to write, you fill out the paperwork mm -hmm. on what you paid. Okay. And you get reimbursed that money. What about okay. housing? Uh, is there any allowance just for uh, not, well, like, Apartments. No, no, no. You don't have any. No, we're, they're, they're not going to put you up. Okay. I'm talking about as far as getting to your appointment oh, okay. and going home. Okay, okay. Yeah, All just, right. just, just your basic travel pay. Okay. It's not much, but it's more than what you had when you went yeah. there for that appointment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pays a little bit yeah. in the gas. Yeah. There's also programs we have. There's a clothing allowance program that they have for veterans. A whole lot of veterans don't know about it. If you've been issued some kind of cream 
any kind of salve, any kind of back brace, knee brace, leg brace, ankle brace, you can fill out a form down there at Prosthetics. You can fill out a form and request a clothing allowance. Mm -hmm. That's a one-time payment of at least $730 once a year. They give you to alter your clothes to fit those apparatuses, oh, okay? okay. Uh, veterans don't know about that. You put it in, if, it, if the apparatus you have falls under certain criteria, you get that payment. And once you receive it, you get it every time that year for the rest of your life. Well, I, I go back to that comment I made about housing. Are there housing allowances for those that are on the streets? That's the that's the problem. That's, that's the problem. That's the problem. That's the so problem. they're not. They're not. No, there's that, nothing there. I've tried, been trying to establish a home for right. rehabilitating yeah. veterans to get them back into the flow of things and everything, and the funding has been taken away from that. So yes, it's very hard. There is a shelter just for veterans in Baltimore. Their funding has been taken away, and they're reaching out to corporates to corporations to help them fund that now. Um, it is a problem and it's being worked on as they put it, and that's one of the things I will tell our presidential mm -hmm. candidates, let's stop working and let's do it. Right, that's right. What would you tell young men and women who are contemplating a career uh, in the military? First thing I would tell them is get your high school diploma or the equivalent because sometimes uh, high school equivalency of diploma is recognized more than a high school diploma because mm -hmm. it's probably went through. But going into the military, pick a field that, number one, if possible, has a bonus to it. Number two, now, that Explain that. You say bonus. pick a field. Yes, it has a bonus. There are different fields. Let's say you can go from infantryman to a fireman on a, on a ship to oh. a aircraft mechanic mm -hmm. to a nurse's aide to an x-ray technician. There are different fields in the military. Well, when they, don't they have to take an exam? Doesn't the exam help, there, There's help one to exam. Determine? It's called an ASRAV exam. Okay. It determines what jobs you can qualify for. Okay. So okay. I would first tell them, study for your ASRAV to score as high as possible. That way you can pick the best fields possible okay. as far as uh, when you get in. When you do get in, try to pick a field that has that's going to benefit you when you get out. Okay, I first went in, I was an infantryman. All I learned was how to kill. Okay, mm -hmm. by the time I got out, I had changed my MOS, which is your Marine occupation, your, right. your military occupational skill. I changed my MOS to cook. Okay, mm -hmm. I changed, I went from a basic cook to a dive facility manager. I was sent to two chef schools, Culinary Institute Whoa. of America and at Johnson and Wales up in Rhode Island. And I've got degrees in both of them as far wow. as restaurant management and cooking. And so you I'm can not, cook us up a Oh, meal. yes, ma'am. Okay. I, I am a, a oh, certified right, chef. Talk about that. But this, <laughs> these, are things, these are things that find something and find a skill or something that you can use when you get out. And if you don't like the field that you're in, and that's what I tell young people on your first enlistment, go on and re-enlist and try to change fields. Mm -hmm. Get yourself into something. You want to go into law enforcement when you get out, then yes, go infantrymen or military police mm -hmm. or whatever. You want to be an x-ray technician, a dental technician, a hygienist or whatever, go into that field. See if those uh, fields are open. Get the training in there and then step one out into the civilian world. Okay. And that will... Um... Also, I would also tell the youngsters while you're in, take benefit of the educational benefits while being in the military. Go to school. Go to college. Let them, let let them, them start play. you off. Go to college. Get yeah. that started. Get out and finish your degree or get it while you're in there. Does that degree go from um, getting a, a four-year degree to a master's? Yes. Or does it, it goes all the way as yes, far as you want to go? As long as you stay in the military. Right. Okay, and That's even if you good. get out, you take your education benefits, you go to a mm -hmm. school mm -hmm. in your area. Right. But carry on. Does that and, cover your kids, if you got kids, or it, or it does not? It uh, does. After, you, after you retire, yeah. After you retire, it yeah. covers the kids. Yep. Okay, all right, very good. Well, you know, it has just been such a pleasure having you on the show. Love being and, here. And uh, I'm going to figure out how we're going to get you back so you can tell us more. Oh, not a problem. About, I have Because I've learned so you. much. I've learned so much. My dad is not with us anymore, mm -hmm. but he served in the Korean War, mm -hmm. uh, in the Army and the Air Force, you know, different periods of more time. More to him, yes. And, um, you know, I um, just uh, honored him so in the, you know, the work, the things that he did, and also for the wounds and, that he And people suffered. do not understand civilians I say when I say people I mean civilians don't understand what military people go through and along with the spouses and the families. Right. That's right. You yeah. know you have that person is leaving and going somewhere for whether it be two weeks one month three months and they're going somewhere else and that mother or that husband has to hold things down right. on the home front. So that's right. They go through the same thing. Right. 
Well, thank you so much. Thank you. And for give me. my very best to your wife, Vanessa. Yes, ma'am. It was a pleasure working with her. Always. <laughs> together. Thank you so much for watching uh, Skills to Pay the Bills today, and we will see you real soon. So just remember, same time, same place. Bye-bye.